What up, everybody? It's your girl, FJ. Today, we're going to talk about the secrets of the INFJ personality type. Oh my gosh, what are these secrets? Could the secret be, I say I'm a vegan, but actually I had a Wendy's burger today. Could the secret be, I actually like Nickelback. Well, today we're gonna find out what are the secrets of the INFJ. We're gonna be looking at an article on introvertdeer.com written by Jen Graneman. It's called the 10, uh, it's called the 10 secrets of the INFJ, the rarest personality type in the world. Let's see what Jen has to say. INFJs are on a different wavelength. This is because we're so intuitive and we have dominant introverted intuition. It gives us kind of a sixth sense that is difficult to explain to others. I agree with this point on the list that yeah, INFJs are definitely on a different wavelength than most people. I will say though that a lot of people are on different wavelengths. There's like a whole spectrum of wavelengths that people can be on. Do INFJs generally feel more isolated than other types? Perhaps, perhaps having a dominant introverted intuition makes them feel uh, like they can't relate as much to other people, but let's not go all in on this. Let's not go too heavily on this feeling of being on a different wavelength because yeah, INFJs are on a different wavelength, but it's not that far from everyone else. There's not a deep chasm. Number two, INFJs are highly perceptive of others. Now the reason this is is because we have extroverted feeling, which means that we're always looking out at other people to see what they're feeling about something. And that's not just emotions, okay? That's also like, what do you like? What do you dislike? What value do you place on things? And so it's just a natural way of being for an INFJ to constantly be trying to pick apart what's going on in everyone else's head. I agree with this. We're highly perceptive of other people. Number three, INFJs absorb other people's emotions. Now watch out for this one. Watch out, playa, because the thing is, yeah, INFJs can absorb other people's emotions. What that means basically is if you are sitting with someone and they are feeling sad, you'll start to feel sad too. If they're feeling happy, you you will start to feel happy along with them. Extroverted feeling makes it so that emotion is kind of like a shared thing. Your feelings are not quite as personal as they might be to someone who has introverted feeling. But, 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 let's get something straight here. Anyone could really be swayed by someone else's emotions, could absorb other people's emotions. It's just a human thing. And I think it's not so much that it's a special thing that only INFJs can do, but I think it's a, it's a thing that sensitive people will do. They'll absorb other people's emotions. It's something that people with high levels of empathy, sometimes called empaths, will do. And perhaps many, maybe all, INFJs fit those specifications, but it's not exclusive to this type. So I just, I just want to make that clear that just because you absorb other people's emotions, it means that you're a very perceptive person who's very sensitive. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are this type, but yes, it is one of the secrets of the INFJ. I feel whatever you're feeling right now. What are you feeling? I feel whatever you feel right now. Number four, they have amazing long range forecasting abilities. Like, what is it gonna snow next winter? We'll see, let's ask the INFJ in the room. So what this is, is introverted intuition. And I want you to think of, let's just, what is, intru what is, what, <laughs> what is intuition? Intuition is looking at the abstract, right? And it is looking into the future. It basically is a forecast. It's guessing into the future about what's going to happen next. It's looking at a pattern. Oh, I've seen what's happened now. And now I can project into the future and see what's going to happen next based on that. Now the introverted intuition is very narrowed in and it's just going to see like, what is this one pathway we can go along based on this one pattern I see? This is actually a very true one. They will have the ability to look long range de depending on if they care. Like if an INFJ 
cares about a specific pattern, like enough to really hone in on it, yeah, then they can tell you 10 years from now what's going to happen, but they're not necessarily going to know everything about everything. You know what I'm saying? Here's the other part of that. The, they're not necessarily going to be right. An INFJ, like myself, I can say, yeah, I, I can see what's coming down the road, but it's not necessarily 100% correct. It's just what I do. That's just where I live. I'm thinking 10 years down the road, what's going to happen? I'll tell you, it's a heck of a way to uh, do anything. Like when you're dating, you're thinking to yourself, what is it going to be like when we're, uh, you know, 50 years old and our kids are in high school and college? How are we going to get along then? Are we going to have the same interest? Are we going to want to retire in the same way once we hit 70? Am I going to be able to retire? Is the social security system going to hold up that long? Probably not. Amazing forecasting abilities. You know, and it's a double-edged sword because when you're just thinking in the future all the time, INFJs, what's going to happen is you're going to have a bunch of anxiety all the time because you're, you're not living in the present, you're looking in the future. And you're going to think you're right about everything that you forecast in the future, which you're not going to be. But you're going to think you're going to be right. And so you're just going to cut off a lot of opportunities before you even allow them to manifest. And you're going to really become limited and super controlling and, and only allow a certain amount of stuff to go on in your life because you see something else that's a little bit outside of the norm for you. And you project way into the future and you're like, nah, I don't see that working out. I don't like it. And you just pass off on it and you stay on your little, little tunnel vision, your NI tunnel vision. Uh, my advice to myself, I'm really just saying this for myself <laughs> and to all the INFJs in there is try some new stuff. Don't just go whole hog in. Is that, is that even the right term to use? The termage? Don't just go all in, put all the chips on the NI and think that you know everything that's going to happen because you don't. Try some new stuff. Try some new experiences. Try not to forecast 10 years down the road. Try it out. You might be surprised. Your life might open up in ways you never expected. Wow, that was like an inspirational speech. I feel like the best way to cap that off is to say, would you, would YouTube, not you, but what would, would you... <laughs> Oh my gosh, would YouTube like to show a commercial right now? Number five, INFJs are both emotional and rational. Now, look, let's get real. Everyone is emotional and rational. But the thing about INFJs, well, really any IJ or any EP, really, but let's not try to make us feel totally not special. But INFJs, yes, feeling and thinking are very balanced. We have extroverted feeling. It's out there making sure everyone is happy, everyone's having a good time, making sure that everyone likes what's going on. Then we have introverted thinking, which is really narrowing down what do I think is true? What do I think works? What do I think is rational? I don't care what other people think. I just want to know for myself what is logical and rational. And we're pretty balanced with those two things. We can go back and forth between, oh my gosh, is, ev is everybody happy? And then going back in to ourselves and being like, does this make sense to me? You see what I'm saying? So yeah, we are very balanced. This is true. This point is very true. Number six, ooh, creators of deep emotional intimacy. So... Uh, from my perspective, INFJs have a tendency to, just speaking from my own experience, have a tendency to be the kind of people who can just instantly open up to strangers and get strangers to instantly open up to them. It's kind of weird. Um, now, that's not exactly, now that I reread re this, that's not exactly what this point is saying, but we can create kind of a quick intimacy with people because... Extroverted feeling, this is something I've been thinking about for a while, extroverted feeling kind of looks at the, uh, at social interactions and, you know, sharing kind of an emotional bond, almost like a game. It's this thing external to us. It's not extremely personal. And so it doesn't, I mean, look, we'll still have issues with social anxiety, with feeling like, oh my gosh, 
what will people think about me? But at the same time, we also, we know the game. We understand the game that's going on. And so we can be like really quickly establishing a rapport with people and feeling confident enough to go in there and and tell people stuff about ourselves and to get information out of other people about them that maybe is not normal for that level of knowing someone. You know what I mean? Taking that even further, when you actually know someone really well, an INFJ is going to be really good at just navigating another person and finding all the ways to connect deeply. It's really a great strength to have. And I know a lot of us are, here's, well, here's, let me just get to the next point. I was about to go in this direction anyway, let's go here. Number seven, they're true introverts. Now, I, I disagree a little bit with this. So in the article here, it says, INFJs are sometimes called extroverted introverts or ambiverts. However, INFJs are true introverts who prefer a small circle of friends and need plenty of downtime to recharge. Well, look, INFJs can be on a spectrum, right? Some can be very shy. Others can be very extroverted. Uh, there's no one answer to it. But on the other hand, the fact that we have introverted intuition as the dominant function, it's an introverted function. It means we really just prefer uh, doodling around in our brain most of the time rather than bouncing off the outside world. Now, if your FE, if your extroverted feeling is getting a good workout, then yeah, you can look like a total extrovert. And that's what I was going to say in my last point, that those of us who are INFJs, who are on the more introverted side, who are more shy, what you need to realize is you have this gift of extroverted feeling where if you can just trust yourself to go out into the social world and just trust yourself that, yeah, I can just instinctively know how to navigate these things. It may, it'll take a little practice. I'm not saying it's total. Maybe instinct is a bad word. It's not total instinct, but it's just the way your feeling is oriented outwards, other people. And it's a strength that you have if you just, <laughs> if you just believe in yourself, man. Number eight, INFJs are sensitive to conflict. Now, yes and no. Yes, Extroverted feeling means we want to keep things smoothed over. But on the other hand, extroverted feeling has this side to it where it can feel comfortable in navigating conflict. It doesn't mean that we're going to seek it out. It doesn't mean we're going to want to go into it. But it does mean that we can kind of understand these interpersonal human connections. We understand how everyone in the room is feeling. And also because we have that balance of feeling and thinking, we can go back and forth pretty well understanding everyone's point of view from, a, uh, from an emotional standpoint as well as applying our own logic to it and figuring out what the best course of action is. And so while we don't like conflict, INFJs can be very good at resolving conflict and can go into it pretty confidently and saying, look, we can all work this out. It's not a big deal. So yeah, we're sensitive to it. We're sensitive, but we can handle it. You got this, bro. Ooh, number nine. This one hurts. INFJs end up in one-sided relationships. It says right here, one-sided relationships occur when others take more than they give. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of us have been in this kind of situation before where we have a friend or significant other, maybe even a family member, and they just, they just need from us. They just take and we're willing to give it because that's how our feeling is oriented extrovertedly. And we want to make other people happy. But if you're not careful, you can just get into this pattern of this is all your relationships. Is You, you don't want to stand up and say, hey, can someone make me happy? Can we turn this around for a second? It's really something to watch out for, especially you younger INFJs. This is something you're going to fall into a lot. The older ones of us, you know, 30 and above, we might have gone through the pattern enough to realize, oh, I need to be selfish every once in a while and stand up for myself and make sure that I'm happy and make sure my needs are met. But when you're younger, you're going to fall into this. You're going to be like, let me just make sure this other person's needs are met. And you're not going to think about yourself 
And you're going to wake up one day and be like, there's nothing in it for me. There's nothing in this relationship for me. And then you're going to feel bad for thinking that. Because I shouldn't, I shouldn't think that. That's selfish. I shouldn't think about myself. How effed up is that? You know? Speaking of which, if you F with this video, smash like. But seriously, you younger INFJs out there, watch out for this. You're going to... Uh, you're going to fall... I, I guarantee you, you're going to fall victim to this. So watch out for it. Number 10... INFJs are looking for their soulmates. Yes. I mean, who isn't, really? But I think that INFJs generally, they don't, they, they don't like dating. They don't like this search. Like, that's, INFJs really hate that. Because our inferior function is extroverted sensing, which is basically looking out there and gathering. A dating app is extroverted sensing. That it's, oh crap, I gotta look through all these profiles, I gotta read a bunch, I gotta like figure out who these people are, I've gotta take in all this new data. We hate that garbage. And then we've gotta go out and meet people on dates, we gotta spend our time, it might not go anywhere. It's like a nightmare for most INFJs. So what we have this happy little fantasy that hopefully, maybe I'll just be out somewhere, I'll be at the movie theater, and this, this cute girl will walk up and we'll be buttering our popcorn together. Ooh, that sounded wrong. We'll be at the soda fountain and she'll spill some soda on me and I'll say, hey girl, not cool, but would you like to be my soulmate? Fantasies like that, where we can just instantly go to, okay, cool, relationship, that deep intimacy that we talked about before. We don't want to have to go through the gathering process of getting to know someone and all these details, getting to know multiple people and, you know, narrow down stuff. I mean, we like the narrowing down. We just don't like the gathering to begin with. Of course, you know, everything in this article being said, it's very, very difficult to find that person with whom you are going to make a connection like that. And it can really feel uh, impossible and hopeless and... <laughs> Uh, I can't, I, all I can tell you is this might be one that INFJs need to simmer down a bit on. You know, if you go out there looking for your soulmate, you are looking for this really abstract thing, which of course you're an INFJ. That's what you do. You look for these abstract things that are really narrowed in, focused in this, this small little thing. This is what I want. In the abstract, guess what? It doesn't exist in real life. So th what you've got to do is dial down this image of your soulmate and just be like, crap, I've got to go out and I've got to do the thing I don't want to do. I've got to gather a bit. I've got to go out. I've got to meet new people. I've got to uh, be open to things that are outside of this very narrow uh intuition that I have, this very narrow projection of the future. Maybe I've got to let myself be a little bit socially drained. You know, you're an introvert. You don't want to get out there that much, spend a bunch of energy, but you just got to. But the thing is, I think if you let go of this idea of the perfect person, the soulmate, this very narrow definition you have, just let go of it and accept that you might never get the exact perfect thing you want out of a relationship, maybe that's when all of a sudden it'll just come to you, this person, because all of a sudden you're, you've opened up more. You're, you're open to more possibilities. You're open to gathering more information. So don't give up, but realize that if, you've, if you are having a hard time finding your soulmate, uh, this is going to sound harsh. It's your fault. You are, you are too narrow. You are too narrowed in. I'm not saying lower your standards to a ridiculous degree. Uh, but what I'm saying is take an honest look at yourself and see how am I just laser focused in on this abstract thing? And how, how much do I need to realize what reality is? You know, and open my eyes a bit. You know what I'm saying? Because a relationship is going to be hard, even if it's with your perfect person, because all humans are difficult to get along with, basically. But 
the good news is you have that extroverted feeling. So you, uh, you should be capable, if you just apply yourself a bit, to navigate relationships and figure it out. But it starts with dialing down the introverted intuition and realizing, whoa, I don't have it figured out. I don't know exactly what a soulmate looks like. At that point, then, I feel like you can actually find it. It's kind of, the, it's kind of this uh, reverse psychology you got to play on yourself. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you want to see another INFJ video, click or tap the screen right there. If you want to see my last video, click or tap the screen right there. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and until next time, stay cool and attractive. Thank you.